G'day folks. Okay, today I want to have a look at the uh, uh, the Renogy DCC 50S in vehicle charger. So it's a DC to DC converter, um, an onboard charger as they call it, and designed for dual battery systems. So your vehicle battery charging, your caravan, trailer, camper, whatever. Um, its purpose for it to, to fully maintain <coughs> the service battery in the um, in the camper trolley caravan whatever from the vehicle battery as well as solar so it's a dual input um, does both jobs so we'll have a look a sec this is the box it comes in uh, I bought this because it does uh, various batteries of course uh, but most importantly it does 50 amps and I was trying to find a high current charger to provide rapid um, charging. I've, I've got a 300 amp hour lithium battery system I'm doing, and I wanted something that would recover, uh, would recover quickly, um, assuming it stopped off grid for a few days. It had been over heavily overcast, and you're down to 10%, but you're not necessarily driving very far. So you want fairly quick recovery. A good thing is the lithium can take the high current. Um, so I thought this is good, 50 amps pumping into it, great, that's what we want. Looked at a few of the other options that were around um, in common ones here, um, uh, Projector and C-Tech and then there's some other, you know, the big brand names of course, that it cost a lot. So I didn't want to spend a fortune and I didn't see that there was a requirement to spend, I don't know, a lot of stuff I see is overpriced. So anyway, this this looked interesting, I've, I've put some energy it before in but uh, in your vehicle it was a 40 amp same thing and I was very impressed with it and uh, so I was looking for something that would do high current couldn't find much so uh, this thing was just due to be released in Australia a few weeks back and I just forward ordered it and waited for it and um, so I've put the whole thing together now as a system and I want to show you what I found so somebody's done a technical assessment of this, uh, DIY Solar, I think his name's Will Price or Will Pierce, um, and you'll see if you search up the DCC 50S, Renergy DCC 50S, you'll find his video, he's got two batteries sitting on a bench and he's doing some tests on it. What he didn't do was have a, a good look at the alternator input, and this is where I've found an issue with this thing, so that's what I'm going to have a look at. Um, Alright, just some information about this thing, it's 12 volt. Uh, it has an operating range of 9 to 16 volts input, according to this. Um, that's the battery input voltage range. Now, it's designed to take both traditional and smart alternators. It does, importantly, which is what I was looking for, something that would do um, lithium. This one does sealed lead acid gels, flooded, and lithium batteries. Now, I couldn't find that in the CTEC and projectors at the time and they were low, lower power output so I was really looking for that high current output so 50 amps out combined uh, so that can be 40 amps of solar and 10 amps of car or whatever it can be made up of a combination it prioritizes solar um, so if there's a significant solar input it doesn't use anything from the vehicle so traditional alternator 13.2 to 16 volts uh, voltage range and smart alternator is uh, 12 to 16 volts input. Um, your maximum alternator input power is 660 watts. And okay, and it's got a number of let's have a look at features. So there's a number of uh, protection features that are interesting with this. So it's designed to um, charge your service battery in your caravan from two DC input solar panel alternator. It's got MPP charging profile for solar so uh, or you know MPPT um, controller function for solar it's got three phase charging profiles bulk boost float uh, it's got a built-in voltage sensing relay for easy setup with traditional alternators well not really that's my issue about that it has but it doesn't do what it's supposed to. Compatible with smart alternators with variable output voltage? Yes, it probably is. Haven't tried that bit yet. That would be an interesting one because I don't think that's going to work as well as it should. Um, and the important good feature, trickle charges the starting battery via the solar panels if 
the caravan trailer service battery, whatever, is full. It, it actually pumps about an amp back into the vehicle battery if you've left it connected. So if you stop somewhere for a few days and you've just got the vehicle there, you can plug it in and you're fully charged, you've got plenty of sunshine, um, it'll recharge, it'll keep your battery maintained in your vehicle. It's a good feature. Um, isolates the starting battery, yep, from the, from the caravan battery. It's got temperature and voltage compensation um, because you get a little temperature probe with it when you buy it that you can plug in and it attaches to the battery to monitor the battery temperature. So if it's hot, doesn't overcharge it. 50 amps is pumping a fair bit. So you probably don't want that if it's too hot. So smart protection features, battery isolation, over voltage protection, battery temperature protection, over current protection, over heat protection, reverse current protection, solar panel and alternator reverse polarity protection. They're important ones. Uh, again, compatible with all your uh, lead acids and lithium. And it's a good, solid, sturdy design and it's well built. And it is, it's a, it's a good product from those perspectives. So that's it. Now let's have a look at it. So first off, I'll have I'll have I'll, try, I'll do the solar input, see how that performs. Then we'll do the vehicle input and see how that performs. So let's have a look at the uh, the machine. So here is the beast. It's uh, two thirty four millimeters by one forty six millimeters by seventy seven. So 234, 146, 77 millimetres deep. It's got a heat sink on the back here, convection cooled. That's the package. So let's have a look at the connections. All right, taking the covers off. We've got an, uh, a common ground point here. So all the inputs and outputs, this is the ground for reference for all of those. So I've taken that out to a common ground point. There's the charger output, and that's this terminal here, and that feeds off to the battery. On the input side, we've got a PV input or solar panel input on this terminal. These are 8 mil terminals, all these bolts. Uh, quite substantial, which is good. Down here we've got an alternator input. Also here we've got a couple of other things. There's an RS485 port up in here which is just an 8-pin RJ45 connector um, and that is, they don't talk about that in the book but uh, one of the features that will be out for that is to be able to plug a uh, Bluetooth into it. Use that connector up a bit closer. Um, now this not sure BTS don't know what that is this is battery voltage sampling this port now that is to monitor the actual battery voltage without voltage drop involved now which battery doesn't talk about that at all in the manual don't know which battery you're supposed to be sampling the battery that the supplier is coming from or the battery that it's going to but since it's battery uh, voltage sensing and it's for solar and uh, vehicle inputs you would think this would be for the battery that you're charging since that's the only common battery to both sides there is no battery on the solar side there's only a battery on this side so I don't know if it doesn't talk about it something can be found out and more importantly down here we've got the ignition sense this wire is for smart alternators in theory um, you have to feed an ignition voltage when you turn your vehicle on this gets plus 12 volts or 13 volts to it from the vehicle and tells this um, charger that you're on uh, you've got a smart alt because it's got a smart alternator the battery it doesn't sense the change so the the focus catches up here um, yes that doesn't this thing doesn't um, know based on the voltage from the power or from the vehicle of that you've turned the vehicle on so smart alternators require this all right so that's that's all various inputs above us here we've got a nominally 24 volt power supply capable of around 27 amps continuous or about 50 amps for short periods that is going to simulate solar panel and here we have a 40 amp but it will do greater 40 amp continuously rated 
um, power supply up to 15 volts. So this is going to be our vehicle for this experiment. And back down onto our charger here, we've got a couple of Anderson plugs attached to it. This one here is back to the solar input and common ground down here. We've got a common common earth point down here. As I said, this is the common earth for the charger. It comes down here to a common earth point. That's the earth for the solar on this plug. And this cable here is the alternator input. Also going to a common ground and that's connected up to here to the power supply. Alright, that's all our connections. And over here we have a um, display which monitors charge and discharge current out of our 300 amp lithium battery, which is over here. Here's the 300 amp lithium battery that we're using as a test subject here. And it's currently sitting at 83% charge. So discharged enough so it's um, fully functioning. I have to wake that up. And there it is, 83%, and we've got no charge current at the moment. All right, on the front, on the front here, we've got a blue light indicating we've got this set for lithium. That's set by there's a selector point on the side here where you can push a small very small shaft screwdriver or something in and this changes colour depending on the battery type so you know you've got green or whatever yellow but this is currently set for lithium uh, that's the blue light which is correct so the right charge profile for that now here we've got the battery connected so we've got a green light over here we've got a solar panel input indicator and here we've got an alternator indicator light Right, so let's, the fan running you can hear in the background is the 24 volt supply, so we'll connect that up. And you'll see this light here will come on shortly. Move this out of the way. It's got to be present for 15 seconds before that light will show up. Here we go. And over here we'll see this light up in a second and away she goes and you can see we're currently generating 35.7 amps which will be set by the uh, voltage at uh, 25 okay so we're on the solar inputs are up here we'll just put the multimeter on it and we'll have a look and see what it's doing I'm going to stay there. Okay, we've got 14.65 volts. Now, the MPPT is working here, and it's currently at 14.6. With no load, that would be less than that. Okay, so I'll just put that on. And interestingly, this is with the solar at 14.66. So if I take this off, take the solar off, disconnected it, put it back on again, take 15 seconds before it comes on, and you can see we've got 15.6 volts out of the panels, which would be fairly overcast, you would think. We represent a fairly overcast day. That will drop down to 14.5 as it starts. So the MPPT uh, multi-power point tracking is working hard, but doing its job. 33, 34 amps out, doing well. And as I say, the voltage here has dropped down to 14.6. So we'll just double check that again I'll disconnect it and get it to come up again at a higher voltage okay I've just reset this and you can see I've set this to around 21 volts which you'd expect to see out of your panels 
it's just going to start up again. There we go, it's just detected solars there. We're now at 37, 39, 42, 44, 46 amps. Okay, because we've got now a higher voltage out of the panels, let's see what the MPPT's moved it to. It's moved it to 20 volts. So this adjusts for maximum conversion of the available power. So it's sitting a bit higher now, but yes, we're certainly getting the required output. Now, some, now the limitation here is my power supply, not the charger unit. So the power supply is limited, um, trying to get that much out of it. All right. Okay, I've now moved that voltage back up again. You can see we've got 23 volts in. Just found the solar, this should come on now. There she goes. And we're at 43 amps, 46, 50 amps, there you go. So maximum power point tracking 51 amps, look at that. Look at that go, that's working great. Solar is really good. And you can see maximum power point tracking again, it's adjusted that voltage. That's constantly changing. It's higher than it was before, so there's better conversion efficiency with a higher input voltage. But you're limited to 25 volts. So there you go, no question, 50 amps on solar works great. All right, let's have a look at the alternator input. So for this, we've got, as I mentioned, a 40 amp continuous rated um, DC to 15 volt power supply up here. That is connected via this cable to the alternator input here. So when I turn this on and providing the voltage is adequate to run this thing, it will um, start charging. So let's have a look see what that does. Turn this on. Well, we've got to turn the power on first. So we'll start with 13 point, we'll start with 14 volts, okay. So this is our traditional alternator input. You see it's drawing no current. We've now got this flashing, so it's saying yes, I've seen alternators there. It's present, waits 15 seconds, then it'll start drawing some current over here. Hopefully. No, no, no it's taken it from solar. Okay. Disconnect solar. We just want to look at just it will it will pref preference solar so let's have a look here's our alternator input as you can see we're drawing 14.4 amps up here and that is giving us a total of 13.7 amps 13.7 amps that's the best it can do this is traditional alternator there is no uh, ignition sense wire connected and all I'm getting is 13.7 amps. Not good enough. That should be a lot better than that. This whole purpose of this thing is says it operates from 9 to 16 volts. Therefore, once it senses that there is significant voltage from the vehicle battery, it should be pumping out, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 amps. It's, it's, you've got plenty of amps. We've got a 100 amp alternator or 80 amps or 60 watt stacks of power and uh, this thing's not cutting the mustard 14 volts that's it that's a that's a standard alternator so and it may even drop down to 13.8 what do we get for 13.8 we get let's take 13.8 we get 11 amps in 11.1 amps in and what have we got on the output here we've got a glorious 10.6 really that's all you can do, Renergy? No, nah, not good enough. How do we fix that, you say? Well, let's have another look at that. So one of the things we know that's here is an ignition sense, which is only required, apparently, for smart alternators. Now, well, what if we connect that up? Let's just have a look at that. Now, this is it here. 
I've got that currently set up on this wire so that's just this wire here. If I connect that to the positive on the power supply up here this will be the same as sensing the ignition from the vehicle. So I plug that in what does that do? Hang on, I've got to turn it on. Uh, yep, okay, so we'll switch that on. That's switched on. And plug this in. Well, look at that. Look at where we're going now. We've now got 31 amps from our power supply at 13.8, which is giving us. 26.7 into the battery well so what if our battery was a little bit higher output let's try this at 14.1 this is about the highest you'll get out of a standard alternator we get 35 amps in up here and we're getting 30.1 amps output so still not 50 now that should be that should be stacks of power to run this thing to its full maximum output power why isn't that working something is not right here with this thing they have done something wrong Renergy clearly have got something amiss here because if you do this with a CTEC or a projector or any um, or any of these other um, uh, brands they whole purpose for them is to lift the voltage lost over the drop back up. So let's have a look what our input voltage is here. Just while we're here, we'll just make sure that we now this is only a four meters of cable. This is my alternator input. So 14 volts in there. So something's working because I've got 12 volts at this terminal here. Now that's two volts drop up between the, your vehicle cranking battery and the um, your vehicle cranking battery and the input terminal of this so car is five meters of cable you probably got at least another five meters on your caravan um, I would suggest that losing a couple of volts over that on 10 mil cable um, is probably not you know losing a volt or so would be pretty normal but something's, something's going on here. It's definitely doing something. If I pull out my little voltage sense, my voltage comes now. This drops down to zero temporarily. Okay, it's gone down to zero at the moment. But it should come back up. It's still seeing. Yeah, here we go. Righto, so it's just doing a bit of a reset because something changed. I'm now back, now this is my standard alternator, 14 volts in. I've got 13.25 here and all it can manage is 14 amps out. So that's 13.25 is the voltage at this terminal. That should be more than enough to give me 20, 30 or more amps out. We've got plenty of current it should be able to boost it. If it's a 9 to 16 volt operating range, 12 volts here should still be able to produce better than just 25 amps. So something's not something's not right with this. It's either got a software problem, because it works really well on solar. Don't know. Anyway, so that's a test. Now I'll go and test it on the car and we'll have a look at what a real you know what a real vehicle puts out and see what happens so here I've got um, my cable which is probably not dissimilar to how long it would be in a vehicle in a trailer caravan or trailer I've got uh, probably four meters so this is going to give me exactly what would happen if I was in a vehicle okay so I've got the car running and we're seeing 14.5 amps and that is based on 13.25 at the input it's 13.25 volts here at the input the alternator input of this 
Now, that's an optimistic number, I would suggest, after you have around six metres of cable between the front cranking battery of your vehicle and the connector on the back of the vehicle, which case is an Anderson plug. In this car, I've got 10 millimetre cable running from the front to the rear and resulting, and I've seen quite significantly lower voltages than that at the battery terminals or at these DC charges. So 13.25 I'd say is good. So if that results in only 13.8 amps, that's not good enough. All right, so now we'll connect up the ignition sense wire. So all I'm gonna do now with this ignition sense wire is add um, plus 12 volts so it knows the ignition's on. Now, this is usually only used for a smart alternator. This car does not have a smart alternator on it. Now this clear clip lead here, this clip lead here is my ignition sense wire which I've got activated by this switch. So as you can see here I've got, currently got 11.9 amps, I'll turn this ignition sense switch on and up she comes. So now I've got 26.1 amps charge current. Clearly you must have the ignition sense wire on whether you've got a smart alternator or not or this will not charge anything like what it's supposed to do. And this should be better than this, this should be able to charge at 50 amps. We've got plenty of current from the vehicle, I've got adequate size cabling, I should be able to um, do better than this. Alright, so there we have it. Um, as you can see, there is clearly something not right with the alternator input on the DCC50S. It works perfectly on solar, works really well, and obviously since it can manage solar panels down to 15 volts and that boost function is clearly working to produce the output, uh, the 50, 50 odd amps output. It should be able to do the same thing, it's the same principle um, on the alternator side. Um, I shouldn't have to have uh, the ignition sense switch for a standard alternator. They say that in their book. It's got a voltage sensing relay and that, which, which is working, I mean it certainly switches on. But 10 amps, that's just ridiculous. That's way too low and um, clearly it works much better with the voltage sensing relay in which is telling the charger that I've got a lower than usual um, voltage and it, and it works harder. I would say whatever the software is set to is incorrect. There's a, there's a software fault in this thing at the moment now. Is it just this one? Who knows? I don't know. I've written to them, asked them to clarify the situation. Um, told them what I've done and we'll see what I get back from energy but there is something wrong maybe it's this one I'll, I'll put something down below and I'll put the link to the other guys um, testing he did in the US uh, DIY solar so um, yeah we'll see what comes out of it and I'll, I'll put some follow-up in if they come back to me and either give me a replacement or tell me what's happened but uh, yeah whatever I don't know what's wrong with it, but it, it, it's not good and it's not fit for purpose. This is the whole thing. It is not fit for purpose as it currently stands, and I'm sure that's not the way it's supposed to work. That's crazy. The older ones worked fine. I've, I've used their 40 amp DC to DC chargers, and they work just great. So don't. we'll see what happens. All right, so don't forget to give me a like. Got any questions, put them down there. I've got this thing here for a while, can't do anything because of COVID-19 at the moment, keeping us a bit clamped down until I get it installed. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching.